situation in so many ways to have a former outstanding player in the league with you as well, helping mentor you. Will Ford tripped up there. You saw the first down earlier by the Blue Bombers, another rare one. But, you know, you look at what it takes, the support system, you know, as a former CFLer, and family is so important to a player and, and, and your coaches and the, the people that you surround yourselves with. Yeah, absolutely. We talk all the time within a game about coaches putting players in position to succeed, but so often the being put in a position to succeed starts so much earlier and starts with a, a supportive family. Second and 12. Here's the rush again. Hall, far side. Some running room here, but Terrence Edwards is going to run out of room. And Max Hall just got pummeled. There's a fear of every quarterback's mom to watch their boy try to get up. And guess what? There's a flag back there, so this drive is going to Take stay the ball, alive. The passer, to number 90. 15 yards at the end of the play. First down. Mondo Sewell, who had an earlier sack on Justin Golds. Hall is banged up. He's going to stay in, though. Well, it ends up that Max Hall kind of gets what you could call high load on this play, where Armando Sewell is the guy who ends up down, falling, hits him below the knees as Marcus Howard comes from the other side, and he's going up high. Max Hall ends up taking a pretty good shot on his right knee as a result. Winnipeg quarterbacks are going to need those ice bags for the trip home. Trying to get there with a W if they can somehow find a way to come back here. The numbers certainly do not favor the Blue Bombers right now. They are 0-6 when they trail after a third quarter this season. Well, that's got to make Winnipeg fans stew inside a little bit to know as they struggle to find an identity, struggle to find a starting quarterback, that the guy wearing green and gold lighting them up so far today could have been very theirs. easily. Could have been a Winnipeg Blue Bomber. And that has been the look for a lot of Blue Bomber and Eskimo fans this season. Two teams, 3-17 and 17 coming in. Pitch and catch this time. Roy Colhurt. It's been the biggest target for the Blue Bombers. Bombers on track for another no-pointer in a third quarter. Uh, I'll tell you, the biggest concern right now to Winnipeg Blue Bombers, they've got an offensive lineman injured. They only dress 6-0 linemen for this game. Glenn January's already out. So you may see a backup defensive lineman like Jake Thomas having to line up at guard for the remainder of this ball game, just depending on the severity of this injury. So we'll step aside and come back to Commonwealth Stadium. The Bombers hurting in more ways than one. 30 Eastern, 430 Pacific. Beer night so far for the Edmonton Eskimo faithful. Blue Bombers lose another old lineman here. The guy they just recently acquired, as a matter of fact, who came into this game because of a previous injury. Uh, Mark Parento had been the, the sixth old lineman. Forced into action here in his first game back with Winnipeg. An injury to Glenn January in the first half. Tim Burke's team. A horrible third quarter existence this season. Six times, ten games, no points. Could be another here. Max Hall throws sideline. Aaron Kelly, the intended target. Blue Bombers have not yet even looked the way of one of their most valuable targets in Corey Watson. Well, Watson is the guy who was leading this team in yards per game receiving coming in. Not as many total receiving yards as Terrence Edwards, but had played fewer games. But you're absolutely right, haven't thrown a pass in Watson's direction. Quads left for Hall. Here comes the rush again. He goes over the top and double coverage again. And another incomplete pass. Terrence Edwards, is, he tried to squeeze it. And once again, Max Hall trying to thread the needle. 
Another incomplete pass. Another heavily contested throw as you see two defenders, Donovan Alexander, the safety, helping over the top on the route. Eskimo DBs right now, Dwayne having no issue reading what the Blue Bombers offense is doing in the air. So Sandro DeAngelis trying to put some points on the board here in this third quarter. This is from the 42. It's his longest of the season. The kick is up and it is way wide. The miss will result in a single. Disgust from DeAngelis. It's a 20-point lead for the Eskimos. And I don't think the skipper was very happy either. Another missed opportunity. Not a lot of life. You can just see the body language over on that Winnipeg sideline. Reverse is absolutely true for the Eskimos. Again, a game, if you're just joining us, it started with a Blue Bomber touchdown on a return, a punt return, taken away because of a holding penalty on the return. Then a fumble, an Eskimo touchdown, and the Eskimos were off to the races as Fred Stamps is here. Meets up with about four Blue Bombers. Fred Stamps, two touchdowns in this game. Nine-yard pickup. Fred Stamps, one of the big contributors in the first half of this football game for the Edmonton Eskimos, came in with seven touchdowns, finished the first half with nine. The chemistry seems to build week after week between he and his quarterback, Mike Riley. Stamps leading the CFL in second down receptions and catches of 30-plus yards coming into this week's games. Riley steps aside for this play. Kerry Joseph comes in. Behind center. Crashes forward. We'll get the first down. And then we'll go back to the sideline. Kerry Joseph at one time was one of the stars of this league. And I think it speaks volumes about Kerry Joseph. He could have walked away, and I think he was thinking about it a couple of years ago and did walk away from football. Remember, he helped win a great cup in Saskatchewan. Went to Toronto, of course, was the MOP in the league. And now he's the backup short yardage guy for the Eskimos. Yeah, but even more than that, Kerry Joseph is one of the dressing room leaders for this team. Swinging it out. Hugh Charles hasn't been heard from since the first half. Spun around. Yesterday, after the walkthrough, Cavis Reed addressed his team on the logo at center field here and then walked away and let the captains of the team, including Kerry Joseph, all speak. And Joseph talked with us earlier today about what that meeting was all about. Sometimes Cavis Reed says the best thing to do is just be quiet. And he did. He walked away and let the leaders speak. Yeah, absolutely. And Kerry Joseph just talked about what they're playing for, playing for pride, playing for the Edmonton Eskimos, playing for their head coach, Cavis Reed. Second down and two, barring penalty here. This will be the last play of the third quarter. Riley completes another pass to Adarius Bowman. And the progression should give him a first down. The teams will change hands once again. And the Edmonton Eskimos will be 15 minutes away from ending this eight-game losing streak. It has been painful here. A lot of losing for the Eskimos this season. They're a quarter away from getting just their second W of the season. That's it. Third quarter complete. Blue Bombers try to get something, anything going. But everything is going right for the Edmonton Eskimos on this sunny September Saturday afternoon. And singing Joey Moss, happy birthday, everybody. Are you ready to go? Hey, 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 okay, folks. We're not gonna have any music. I'll give you a one, two, three count, and away we go with Joey and a lusty happy birthday. So let's do it. One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy 
Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Joey. Happy birthday to you. Hey, what a nice moment, Joey Moss. Name that rings familiar in the city of champions. Joey celebrating his 50th birthday today, born with Down syndrome. Story here, a remarkable one. Wayne Gretzky got him a job as an equipment guy with the Oilers. Works in the locker room with the Eskimos. Mike Riley taking off. And Mike Riley almost had his head taken off as well on the far sideline, but Joey Moss gets a standing ovation here. So happy birthday, Joey Moss, and I'm sure Wayne Gretzky also sends the best, and he gets to go around the stadium track as well. All right, even better, the Eskimos. Take your foul, unnecessary roughness. In pick number seven, 15 yards into the play. First down. S appear to be on their way to giving Joey a win for birthday number 50. So let's take a look. Riley again out of the pocket and again taking off. And that was unnecessary. Hence the 15 yard penalty. Well, probably a little bit of frustration factoring into that decision for DeMond Washington. Riley wants to go again. I better go down, and Kenny Maynard drops him. Second Blue Bomber sack. Mike Riley has over 100 yards rushing. There are running backs who have played in this league for years who have never had a 100-yard rushing day. Yeah, well, you're standing next to one of them, so we're talking <laughs> Sorry about, about that. Big day for Riley. Again, he's proven himself as a scrambler. And the S have adapted their offense using that as a little bit more of a weapon as this season has evolved. That sack, though, second down. There's a penalty flag. Looked like the Eskimo receivers were offside. And Darius Bowman has his second touchdown. But will this stand up? Was it against Winnipeg or was it against Edmonton? Offside. Edmonton number four. Five yard penalty. Repeat second down. Well, that's one of the reasons why Darius Bowman was so wide open. He almost had his second major score. This will come back. Yeah, keep an eye on those Eskimo receivers. Bowman's number two to the field. Jackson will conduct. Little head start. Taunting. Evan at number 85. Ten more yards. Main second down. Well, those are two costly penalties because that almost takes them out of field goal range here. Cavis Reed's not happy. Nate Kuhorn might be coming out of this uh, huddle, and he is. He'll have to hear it from his coach. Yeah, I, I'm not sure that Kuhorn was the guy that, that did it. I saw Shamad Chambers having words with Demon Washington in the end zone, and that's where the flag was thrown. Shema well, Chambers, <laughs> meanwhile, is on the field in Nate Kuhorn's position right now. Well, if it's Shema, he might be coming off here momentarily, too. Put Matt Carter in the game. He'll be coming off anyways because it's third down. Well, the Eskimos shot themselves in the foot there. Close to the red zone, they end up the 45-yard line, and Grant Shaw, instead of a Hugh O'Neill field goal attempt at the very least, and will be Grant Shaw punting it away, looking for the coffin corner here. Javon Johnson back. This looks like a good kick. Bouncing, but it will bounce into the end zone for a single point. Make it 25 to four. The 21-point lead is restored, but so far, what a day for the Eskimos, including big number 91. Marcus Howard has one. The Eskimos have four sacks. In this game, they've 
forced three turnovers, 14 points coming off of two turnovers early in the game and really haven't looked back. They have not got much resistance from the Blue Bombers, especially offensively. Bombers offense, the standstill. The only guy who seems to be doing anything is Rory Colhurt on the other end of passes from Justin Goltz and Max Hall now. Well, Bomber quarterbacks have faced pressure throughout this football game. You just see the flurry of sacks here. This isn't even accounting for the hurries and hits on Winnipeg quarterbacks in this ball game. Eskimo defensive line has controlled the trenches, and it's not about to get any easier for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers as they're down to four healthy offensive linemen. They've got a backup D lineman, Jake Thomas, playing right guard right now. Good day for Greg Marshall's crew. Greg Marshall spent time in Winnipeg and other teams, Max Hall. Time out, Winnipeg. Didn't like what he saw here. 11 and a half minutes to go, so the pressure is on a defensive guy, Jake Thomas, who doesn't even have his name on his jersey because he has to wear a number in the 50s or 60s. As he goes two ways here, plays on the O-line, normally wears number 95. Yeah, forced into action. This reminds me of one of my old two teammates, Stu Laird, at D-line, but he was forced into a similar situation. Stu had a rough day playing defensive line, or playing offensive line. The young guy, Jake Thomas. Great player in Acadia. CIS days. Max Hall goes deep, and what a catch. Contested. And Aaron Kelly comes down with it again. And the Bombers finally have a big play. And Aaron Kelly comes down with it. 26 yards. Thomas, you can just see the back at number 60. Six on the play in at right guard. A pretty good job holding his own there, getting a little bit of help from the running back. Against Ted Laurent. And Aaron Kelly. Another terrific catch for number 19 if they can get the ball out to him. Well, hand it off this time. Will Ford trying to find an opening? He does. Kicks it outside. Ford, sideline. Down near the 15-yard line. His best scamper of the day. Suddenly, the Bomber offense springs to life. Well, you see that burst that has allowed Will Ford to have some success in the return game for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. And just to get to the outside on this one, turn it upfield. Made a few Eskimos miss, including Eric Samuels. Red zone again, Blue Bombers. Need a bunch of points here. Play action out of the backfield, though Terrence Edwards spied perfectly this time by Samuels. Well, Samuels got up slowly after the last play, a little bit banged up after missing that tackle on Will Ford, but rebounds quickly. Again, Samuels, usually a big special teamer for the Edmonton Eskimos, but forced to play every down here on defense due to an earlier knee injury to Chris Robacamba. Max Hall, 11 of 16, 129 in relief. Needs a touchdown, though, and battling Aaron Kelly on the corner with Joe Burnett. All looking in the end zone. No flag. And the Blue Bombers, who are down 21 with under 10 to go, are electing to go for the field goal here. Well, Taking Burnett. the points. Burnett does a nice job staying right in that hip pocket on Aaron Kelly, not allowing him to get any separation. Credit the Eskimo defense, Dwayne coming in again. The Bombers have been outstanding in the red zone inside the 20 yard line this season, but they have been silenced here. No touchdowns, DeAngelis puts this one through, making the score 25 to seven. Long, long road yet still for the Blue Bombers. Their defense needs to force a turnover or two.